Hey guys, Stephen Cox here, and today we're going to be learning the scariest mode of the major scale, the Locrian mode. So if you like videos like these, please hit subscribe below and consider becoming a patron for the printable tabs. So today we're going to be learning B Locrian, so we're going to be starting on the 2nd fret of the A string, then we're going to play the 3rd fret, and the 5th fret, still on the A string. Now we're going to switch up to the 2nd fret of the D string, the 3rd fret, and the 5th fret, all those notes are on the D string, and then we're going to switch up to the G string, play the 2nd fret, and the 4th fret. So let's go up that again. So we've got on the A string, two, three, five. On the D string, two, three, five. And on the G string, two and four. Then we're gonna go backwards down the same notes. So start on the fourth fret of the G string, then two. Then on the D string, we're gonna do the fifth fret, third fret, and second fret. And on the A string, we're gonna do the fifth fret, third fret and the second fret. So let's play that together slowly. One, two, three, four. All right, so now that we have the scale down, let's talk about it for a second. So why does this sound creepy? Why does it sound weird? Well, the Locrian mode is the seventh mode of the major scale, which means if we were playing in the key of C major, we're starting on the seventh note of the major scale. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, which happens to be a B. Now, because we don't have all the notes down here, we're gonna bring it down the octave, but we're essentially just playing that note, then playing the C major scale, and then stopping on B. So this scale feels like it really wants to resolve back to C, but we're not letting it. So that's part of the reason. It just feels unresolved. It feels kind of um, creepy for that reason. The other reason is there are a lot of interesting intervals in this scale. So right off the bat, we have what's called a minor second, which is just a half step, and that's the start of the scale. So that's kind of weird already. Then we also have a minor third in the scale from the second fret of the A string to the fifth fret of the A string. So those three notes already sound kind of mysterious right off the bat. And the other real reason that it's really dissonant is that we have a flatted fifth compared to a major scale. This interval is called a tritone, and the tritone is going to be the second fret on the A string compared to the third fret of the D string. And so that it's a super dissonant interval, and it was avoided in church music for a really long time. People considered it the devil's interval. It's real evil and spooky sounding. That being said, this scale has that right away. And it's like the major scale technically has that in the middle of it, but this is kind of like right away starting from the first note. And then also the chord that you would outline here if you were to arpeggiate this scale, you'd be playing the first note, the third note, and the fifth note of the scale. So first note, third note, fifth note. One, two, three, four, five, right? So if we just play the first, third, and fifth note, it would sound like this. So as you can tell, it's not a major or a minor arpeggio, it's actually a diminished arpeggio. So that's the other reason it kind of sounds spooky. So now that we know that, let's play a groove based off of this. All right, so the first part of this groove sounds like this. So 
So we're gonna start on the second fret of the A string. We're gonna play that two times. And we're gonna jump right up to that third fret on the D string, then back to the second fret on the A string, then to the second fret on the D string, then the fifth fret of the A string, then the third fret of the A string, and the second fret of the A string. And then we're gonna hold this note out through beat one of the next measure. These are all eighth notes, by the way. One and two and three and four and until this one. And so then we're gonna hold this out through beat one of the next measure. And then we're gonna play it again, second fret of the A string, then the third fret of the D string, then the second fret of the A string, second fret of the D string, then we're gonna play the fifth fret on the A string, the third fret, and then back to the fifth fret, still on the A string. So let's play that part together. One, two, three, four. All right, so the next measure is gonna be the same as the first measure. So that's just gonna be Okay, so we won't go over that because that was the same as the beginning of the piece. But after we are holding that note out again, this part's totally different. So this part's gonna sound like this. So let me play those two measures together. So this is the fourth measure of the piece. And basically we're starting with that held out second fret on the A string. Then we're gonna play it again. Then we're gonna play the third fret and the fifth fret on the A string. And then we're literally just going up the mode. The second fret on the D string, third fret and fifth fret still on the D string. And then we're gonna play the second fret on the G string. And then we're gonna go back to the beginning and repeat that whole entire pattern, everything up to this point again. So let's play it together with the repeat. One, two, three, four. So now we're gonna go into a part that really outlines the arpeggio from this scale. And we're gonna start on the fourth fret of the G string. And it's gonna sound like this. All right, so first we're gonna be playing the fourth fret on the G string, the third fret on the D string, back to the fourth fret on the G string, back to the third fret on the D string. Then we're gonna play the fifth fret on the A string, back to the third fret on the D string, then the fifth fret on the A string again, and the second fret on the A string. And we're gonna hold that out. So that measure is really tricky. So let's play that together real quick. One, two, three, four. Right? And that's the idea. So then the next measure is pretty familiar. This was actually the fourth measure in the piece where we basically just run up the scale from that held out note. Stopping on the second fret on the G string. So once again, that's just gonna be the second fret on the A string, the third fret and the fifth fret still on the A string. Now we're gonna go to the second fret on the D string, the third fret and the fifth fret still on the D string and then the second fret on the G string. And then the next measure after that is the same as the first measure of this section, which is that. So once again, that's four on the G string, three on the D string, four on the G string, three on the D string, then five on the A string, three on the D string, five on the A string, and then two on the A string. So if that was a little bit too quick for you, just remember that this was the first part of this section of the piece.
as well. And then we get something new for the next measure after that. So this is gonna sound like this. After we're holding out that two, we're gonna go. And that's gonna be the third fret on the A string, the fifth fret, still on the A string. Now we're gonna do the second fret of the D string, third fret, back to the second fret, still on the D string. Then the fifth fret on the A string and the third fret on the A string. So coming out of this part, this part. So let's play that together um, from what I just played now. And then after that, we'll play the whole section. One, two, three, and four, and. All right, so now we're gonna go back to the beginning of that section. Starts sounding very similar. One, two, three, four. So then after that, we basically just repeat what happened at the beginning of the piece in the first four measures. We're just playing that over again. And ending with, which is just um, two notes plucked at the same time. I like using my thumb to pluck the A string and either one of my other fingers, but um, I use my middle finger to pluck the G string. And that's going to be the second fret on the A string with the fourth fret on the G string. So it's just a B, a low B, and a high B. Get that octave sound going on. The inspiration behind this was Batman. Basically, what we'll do right now is we'll play from measure 13 to the end, which is the last four full measures of the piece with that ending thrown on. So one, two, three... Four. All right, guys, that's it for today's lesson. I hope you've enjoyed learning the Locrian mode so that you can get some spooky vibes going before Halloween. If you like videos like these, please subscribe below. I have a video like this coming out every single Tuesday. And then consider becoming a patron for the printable tabs. I will see you guys next Tuesday and next Thursday for the live stream.